Hello, it's Mrs. Matts here and welcome back to my channel. Before we do anything else, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can keep up to date with all of Mrs. Matts upcoming videos. Today we're going to look at the 2019 Leaving Cert Ordinary Level Paper 1 Question 2. This is a complex numbers question and I'm going to do it bit by bit and I will zoom in so you can get a good look at the question as I do it. Just before we move on, a comment about complex numbers as a topic in the leave insert, whether it be in ordinary level or higher level, complex numbers as a question is very isolated on the paper. It doesn't spread into other topics like you might see with algebra or area and volume or sequences and series. If you can look down along the question and spot that you're talking about complex numbers, happy days. You don't expect to see this anywhere else on the paper. You don't expect anything else to be in this question either. The only place you might come across complex numbers or imaginary numbers is when maybe you might have an imaginary root on a quadratic. But other than that, complex numbers is pretty much kept to itself in one complete question. Also I want to mention that there is only a certain amount of questions that can be asked in a complex number topic so it's a really nice question to work hard on and focus on and let that be your starter question possibly in paper one. It'll calm you down, you're not expecting any surprises, it's quite reliable, quite predictable in terms of what you're going to be asked. I do recommend to students who find the fact that there are quite a lot of variability within all the questions in paper one, that complex number be their first question that they do, gives you the confidence to go ahead and start the rest of the questions. So this is question two, part A, part I. And if you have a look here already, very, very quickly, we can see that there actually is a hint already to tell us that we are looking at a complex number question. Like always, get out your highlighter, your red pen, or whatever you need, and underline or circle the relevant information. The complex number Z1 is equal to two plus I. So I'm gonna circle that and make it obvious. The next thing they're telling me is that I squared is equal to minus one. Now that is relevant for every single complex number. And a lot of times they're gonna tell you this in the exam paper question, so that's really nice of them. How generous. Looking at part I, it says that to find the complex number Z2, that it is the same as two multiplied by Z1. So that's all that's telling you here is to take Z1, which you have multiplied by two. So that's what we're going to do. Two multiplied by Z1. Two multiplied by two plus I. I always make sure that my eyes have a little curl on them and I have a decent dot on the top just so I don't get them mixed up with ones. And you'd be surprised how easily that can happen. So if maybe if your writing is a bit messy um, and you're aware of that, maybe make the effort just to make the eyes very, very obvious to yourself. Two by two is four. Two by I is two I. That is my complex number Z2. So I'm just gonna label that there. All right, second part of the question then, it says find Z2, which we have done, and plot and label it on the argon diagram. So looking at our argon diagram here, so what we would know as our x-axis, we now call the real axis, and what we'd have known as our y-axis, we call the imaginary axis. Now they're very relatable because you can see the real number always is written first, the x is always done first, the second part, the imaginary part, is always written second when we write down a complex number. And the y-axis is always the second one we look to when we're drawing a point. So they are relatable there. What you do is you go four on the real and up two on the imaginary. So your z2 is there. So that is part i of that question. Nice. Part II of part A is asking me for Z1 with a little bar over it. That stands for the complex conjugate of Z1. If Z1 is 2 plus I, Z1 bar is 2 minus I. 
So I simply change the sign of the imaginary part. They also say plot and label it on your argon diagram. We're going to go to 2 and down to minus 1. So Z1 bar is just there on my diagram. Notice that they are pretty much reflections of each other in the real axis there. Okay, so that's a good thing just to know. So in part three, we're asked to investigate if the modulus of Z2 is the same or is equal to Z1 plus Z1 bar added together on the modulus of that. So what does the modulus do? The modulus tells us the distance our complex number is from 0, 0 on our graph. So a quick revision before we start. If I was asked for the modulus of a complex number, let's call it a plus bi. To get the modulus of it, I take the real bit and I square it, plus the imaginary bit and I square it and I put it underneath a big square root. Let's do z2 first. So we know that z2 is equal to 4 plus 2i. We found that up above in part i. The modulus of that... is the four squared plus the two squared all in a square root. Four squared is 16, two squared is four. We get the square root of 20. Now we can tidy that up. What you can do here is you can reduce that and it will be two root five. Now we look at Z1 plus Z1 bar. Z1 is 2 plus i. Z1 bar is 2 minus i. So let's add those together first of all. Let's not worry about the modulus for this moment. 2 plus i plus 2 minus i. So when we're adding complex numbers or subtracting complex numbers, you keep the reals together, you keep the imaginary numbers together. 2 plus 2 gives me 4. Plus i plus minus i. Again, you can do that on your calculator if you want. It gives us nothing. So we're just left with 4. Let's get the modulus of 4. So we get the square root of that. We know that 4 squared and with a square root will cancel each other out so we end up with an answer of 4. If you didn't know that your calculator will tell you that information anyway. Are they the same? Absolutely not. They're very different numbers. Okay if you put 2 root 5 into your calculator it gives you 4.472 etc and lots of other decimal places and it gives you four they're close but they're not the same if you want to tidy up your findings go back and say that z the modulus of z2 is not equal to the modulus of z1 plus z1 bar and that is it done this is part b this is the last part of this question altogether and it says show that z1 is a solution to the equation z squared minus 4z plus 5 equals 0. There's no need to panic here. What you need to realise is if that z squared minus 4z plus 5 was just a normal equation with x's in it, you wouldn't hesitate to use the minus b formula to find its solutions. So that's exactly what we are going to do and we're literally going to show that when we use the minus b formula on this equation, we're going to get 2 plus i. I'm going to take your normal minus b formula that you have used many a time. Minus b plus minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. The a value is the number in front of the z squared which is 1. b is the number in front of the z which is minus 4. And c is our number at the end which is plus 5. And you want to fill that in to your minus b formula. We get minus minus 4 plus minus minus 4 squared minus 4 by 1 by 5 all over 2 by 1. Okay so at this stage here from an examiner's point of view you are quite a bit through the marks at this stage so you've definitely got merit shown here by labeling your ABC and filling them in correctly into your equation. Now the next thing is to give me two values for Z. 
So we're going to work our way down a little bit further first. Usually I would have no problem in telling a student that once you have this written down, you can put this into your calculator and give me the two values. However, because we know that one of the solutions is imaginary, I am going to do it step by step just to show you what you're going to see. So minus minus four gives me plus four. I'm going to put these into my calculator and get an answer. When I work this out here, and I'm particularly looking at this piece of calculation underneath the square root, you will get a minus four. You put the square root of minus four into your calculator, it's going to give you an error because square root of minus one gives us i, which is an imaginary number. We know that the square root of minus one gives us i. This is where your knowledge of working with thirds is important because your calculator ain't gonna do anything for you. So what we know about thirds is we can take this number here, the minus four, we can take the minus four and we can look for its factors. So because we know this fact, we're gonna say that square root of minus one multiplied by the square root of four is the same as this. We now know that this gives us i, and we know that this gives us two. Rewriting it a little bit tidier, two i. So we're now gonna say plus four, plus or minus two i over two. Four divided by two gives me two, and two divided by two gives me one. Z is equal to two plus i, and z is equal to two minus i. They are the solutions of this quadratic equation. This question asked us to show if two plus i is a solution for that equation, and from our work we can see yes it is.